To try to make the world in some way better than you found it is to have a noble motive in life, says Andrew Carnegie, the famous and wealthiest industrialist of the 19th century, who dedicated the majority of his fortune to charitable causes. Today's video takes a look at the philanthropy lifestyle of Andrew Carnegie. Known as the father of modern-day philanthropy, Andrew Carnegie was a man with a burning desire to foster international peace and security and make education easily accessible and widely reached. As a result, he focused his philanthropy on scientific research, education, libraries, and universal peace. The man in question was an ordinary Scottish boy raised in Dunfermline by Margaret Morrison Carnegie and William Carnegie. He lived in a typical weaver's cottage with only a basic compartment. How he became a billionaire and what he sought to do with his riches was a huge sacrifice that billionaires hardly made. What did he do? Andrew Carnegie is remembered for many charitable projects and initiatives. However, he is best known for his gifts of free public library buildings, which began in his hometown of Dunfermline, eventually spread throughout the English-speaking countries, including the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. He began funding the construction of thousands of libraries in 1885 to give free access to everyone. Fast forward to 1900s, Andrew Carnegie continued his charitable works. He established the Carnegie Technical Schools, which later became the Carnegie Institute and is now known as Carnegie Mellon University, one of the world's leading research universities. However, four years down the line, Carnegie founded the Carnegie Hero Fund Commission, which acknowledges and rewards individuals who spontaneously risk their lives to support others. He additionally founded the Carnegie Foundation to improve teaching. The Carnegie Relief Fund, the Carnegie Dunfermline Trust, and the Carnegie Trust for the Universities of Scotland are funding organizations under his name with the initiative to support injured steelworkers, his hometown, and reinforce higher education in his native land, Scotland. You should also know that Carnegie married Louise Whitfield of New York City in 1887. She backed his philanthropy and signed a prenuptial agreement that stated Carnegie's intention to give away nearly his entire fortune during his lifetime. Give a thumbs up to Louise Whitfield for supporting her husband to make the world a better place. Years later, Andrew Carnegie published The Gospel of Wealth. He boldly articulated his view of the wealthy as trustees of their good fortune, who should live without extravagance, provide modestly for their families, and use their wealth to promote the welfare and happiness of others. Carnegie's intentions were widely applauded after this statement of his philosophy was read all over the world. He was a child raised out of nothing, but with the passion and determination to succeed, Andrew made the most impossible possible. If you're wondering what he might have spent his money on aside from philanthropy, watch our next video on Most Expensive Things of Andrew Carnegie to find out. Billionaires are known for innovations, philanthropy, and world-changing endeavors, so be sure to subscribe to Luxury Men with notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any of our new uploads if you enjoy luxury and success stories. In 1901, Carnegie made a dramatic move in his life. He sold his steel company to J.P. Morgan for $480 million. After retiring from business, Carnegie set about distributing his fortune in earnest. He paid for thousands of church organs in the United States in addition to funding libraries. Carnegie's fortune aided in the establishment of numerous colleges, schools, nonprofit organizations, and associations in his adopted country, as well as many others. He also commenced the Carnegie Corporation of New York in 1911 as a philanthropic organization with all this fortune, believing that the man who dies thus rich dies disgraced. He gave up his wealth to support the discovery of insulin and the dismantling of nuclear weapons, the production of Pell Grants, and Sesame Street. The corporation fought a good fight in helping to shape public discourse and policy for more than 100 years. Millions of people have benefited from Carnegie's foresight, a legacy of genuine and lasting good, and for that, will forever be remembered. The nobleman, Andrew Carnegie, born November 25, 1835, passed away on August 11, 1919, at age 83. It's rather unfortunate that good people die too. What are your thoughts on the philanthropy lifestyle of Andrew Carnegie?
please share with us your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Stick around to watch our next video on Larry Ellison Lifestyle. Extravagant rich lists of Larry Ellison if you enjoy Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle, so much. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.